Well, Tucker Carlson says Trump is going to win in a landslide. A very big event last night in Georgia. Tucker, along with RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and Donald Trump, delivered, honestly, one of the best speeches that I've ever seen Tucker give, and I've seen a lot of Tucker's speeches over the years. Um, Speaking to a massive fired-up crowd in Georgia there, Carlson explained a second Donald Trump presidential election victory uh, would be the end of the GOP nominee's redemption arc, almost like this is a sort of a, you know, a redemption arc story. Um, After he's been attacked, defamed, indicted, I mean, shot in the face, arrested, um, and all of that. Listen to this. And so on election day, and I sincerely believe Donald Trump's going to win. And if I thought he was going to lose, I'd be here anyway, by the way. I would. In fact, I would have been here earlier if I thought he was going to lose, just to make the point. I mean it. I don't like people who jump on the winning train, okay? I think Donald Trump's going to win. And not only do I think Donald Trump's going to win, I think that the vibe shift has been so profound. I mean, the numbers suggest he's going to win. He's ahead in all seven battleground states. But much more important, and the early voting seems to be favoring him, but more important even than the conventional political markers is what you smell around you. And it's the return of freedom. It's the return of the country you grew up in, where you could say things like, I like that guy, and maybe like the other person, that's fine. That was not allowed for nine years, and it's allowed now. And I think, and it's because of what they did, by the way, they deserve this, but I think the vibe is so strong right now, I don't think we can get away with pretending something else happened. I don't think we can have another 2020 at this point. I just don't. I don't. Where they hid relevant facts from you, They prevented you from knowing about their candidate and then claim victory with 37 billion votes or whatever they claim he got. That's rigging the election, period. If you end, if the government prevents people from knowing critical information about a candidate, they have rigged the election. And they did that, period. Oh, you're not allowed to say that. I'm not allowed to say it because it's 100% true. And every person who hears it knows it's true, including the people who did it. I don't think they can do that again. I don't. And I don't think, no matter what they pull, two weeks from now, 13 days from now, I don't think they can get away with standing up and being like on MSNBC, no, actually, Kamala Harris is a historically popular, it turns out. Woman who's never had a job who can't even pronounce her own first name consistently. That's how false she is. Some woman who grew up in Montreal, Canada is lecturing me about America. Okay, I don't think they can do that because I don't think people are going to sit back and take it. I don't. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Carlson also destroyed the mainstream media and Democrats who have pushed this false narrative that Americans who like Trump are somehow weirdos and marginalized misfits. Uh, when the reality is the ruling class, as he pointed out, is filled with actual freaks and misfits. You're actually seeing it now, right? Talk about Bill Gates and, and Jeffrey Epstein and all of those people that are trying to protect their weird sort of pedophilia in Washington, D.C. and everything else. Those are the weirdos. Everyone in Hollywood? Yeah, those are mm-hmm. the misfits. Yeah. I mean, had Kevin Sorbo, uh, actor Kevin Sorbo, he's like, the reason I, he goes, I wasn't kicked out of Hollywood. I left because they're all pedophiles. Yeah. <laughs> right? These are all the people supporting Kamala Harris, by the way. Mm -hmm. Holding fundraisers for her and all of that. Um, He says it's a cult. Uh, Tucker said, quote, none of the normal people are supporting the Democratic machine. It's the party of weirdos, of envy, of hate, of redemption, of bitterness, of weakness, of total lack of creativity. It's a party of conformity. It's a party of the machine where it doesn't matter who the candidate is because individuals are immaterial. He says, all that matters is the collective. That's the Soviet model. And he finished the speech with this, uh, saying, we're sick and tired, and we're not buying your bullshit anymore. I love this. Watch. That's the point at which you say no. I'm sorry. I put up with this crap for a long time. I indulge your little fantasy. It's like when your teenage girl becomes a vegetarian, and you're like, okay, that's, you know, okay, it's fine. No, I totally understand. And you're like, it's a phase. But if that phase goes on for nine years and includes destroying your major cities 
and allowing your country to be invaded by millions of foreigners whose identities you don't know, and whose purpose in this country is unclear, by the way. Why shouldn't we feel threatened by that? If they go out of their way to crush families, to make it impossible for your kids to buy a house, I mean, getting involved in the sex lives of your children, which they are, if they do all of that, they need to lose. And at the end of all of it, when they tell you they've won, no. You can look them straight in the face and say, I'm sorry, dad's home, and he's pissed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Longtime viewer Lisa Pettit in our show, in our chat, says, I wish I was that positive about the outcome of the election. It does feel like we're all on tenterhooks, but I like the I like you know, it. positivity, yeah. um, the idea that the Democrats go back to the drawing board, realize they're all perverts. And don't come back until you've paid penance. I don't want to hear from you. And daddy's home. Yeah. We're, we're, case closed. We're done You're now. grounded, Democrats, for being perverts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>